Greetings to the viewers of this video. In this video, we are going to see about the 1. Analytical procedure to determine residual solvents. Next, number 2. How to report the levels of residual solvent in the container. First, let us see the analytical procedure shortly. The residual solvents are determined by gas chromatography. If possible, harmonized procedures are used, as described in pharmacopoeia. Otherwise, manufacturers can select the analytical procedure by their own. If only class 3 solvent is present, a non-specific method such as loss on drying is used. Then, let us see how to report the levels of residual solvents in a pharmaceutical container. Manufacturers of pharmaceutical products need certain information about the content of residual solvents in drug or excipients to meet the criteria of this guideline. The supplier of the raw material must provide statement in the solvent container for the comfort of the manufacturer. Now, let us see how the statement should be. If only class 3 solvents are present, then the statement should be only class 3 solvents are likely to be present, loss on drying is less than 0.5%. If class 2 solvents are present, only class 2 solvents are likely to be present, all are below the option 1 limit. Here, the supplier would name the class 2 solvents, represented by X, Y. If both class 2 and 3 solvents are present then, only class 2 solvents X, Y, and class 3 solvents are likely to be present. Residual class 2 solvents are below the option 1 limit, and residual class 3 solvents are below 0.5%. If class 1 solvents are likely to be present, they should be identified and quantified. If the solvents of class 2 and 3 are present at levels greater than the option 1 limit, or 0.5% respectively, they should be identified and quantified. This is all about reporting the residual solvents. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.